from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Did anyone have the misfortune of watching the World Series last night? First of all, there was a rain-delayed game over the weekend. A rain-delayed game. Uh, it did not start until just after 10 p.m. Philadelphia time. Because, you know, on the East Coast, uh, especially in the Northeast, they are running out of playable days for baseball. <laughs> Next week is November. And so uh, they don't want to have any uh, cancellations or postponements. Uh, they want to get these games in. And so last, uh, it was Saturday, I believe. Saturday, they uh, they let you wait and wait and wait and wait until finally at uh, on the West Coast about seven fifteen, I guess they came started, and um, the game did not end until I believe about one forty five a.m. in Philadelphia. That game was the lowest rated game in the history of the World Series. It's bad enough that it's Philadelphia and Tampa Bay. But, uh, and, you know, again, in Philadelphia and Tampa Bay, they're very excited about this, but in reality, the rest of the country doesn't care about either one of these teams. But uh, to make people wait hours and hours for that game to come on, I'm amazed they had 9 million viewers left. I'm amazed they had that many. Holy cow. So I thought that was bad, but last night really took the cake. You got a World Series now uh, with Philadelphia leading three games to one. And um, last night would have been the last game played in Philadelphia. Because the series switches back to Tampa Bay if Philly doesn't win last night's game. So last night would have been the last game. And it is pouring rain again. And the Phillies do not play in a dome stadium. They don't have a retractable dome, nothing. It's pouring rain, and Major League Baseball decides to go ahead and play the game anyway. Puddles, fog, wind, balls getting lost in the rain. I mean, it was disgusting. And the the worst part of it all was the tying run, which was scored by B.J. Upton, who had to take a big wide turn around third base as he was heading for home to score the run because the third baseline was underwater. And it wasn't until, how convenient was this? It wasn't until Tampa Bay tied up the game that the commissioner of baseball, Bud Selig, uh, finally just said, uh, all right, <laughs> we're going to suspend the game. And you know why he did that. I don't care what he says. I don't care what anybody says. The reason he did that was because, I don't know if you know about how, how baseball works with rain, but the rules of baseball say that after uh, four and a half innings, you have an official game. You have an official game. This game had gone into the sixth inning, but Philadelphia was winning. And had Bud Selig said, Rain, 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 and, and, and stop the game. Philadelphia would have won the game because it would have been official. So it's real obvious what he did. He waited until Tampa Bay tied up the game so that the World Series wouldn't be decided by a rainout 
or by a game that was called called on account of rain in the middle of the game. The reality is, though, that's the way the World Series, if they, look, they shouldn't have played that game at all last night because the weather conditions were horrible. But if they were going to play the game, then the Phillies should have won the series and that should have been it. Those are the rules in baseball. There are no rules in baseball that allow the commissioner to step in and change the rules in the middle of the World Series. To change the rules because it's the last game in Philadelphia, or because it's almost November, or because of whatever. And under, uh, uh, I mean, the fact is, after five innings, uh, and in last night's case, because they were playing in Philadelphia, after four and a half innings, the Philadelphia Phillies were winning. And Philadelphia should have been declared the world champion at that point. That's it. It should have been over. Instead, they suspended the game in the sixth inning with a plan to play the game tonight. And now, of course, it's still raining in Philadelphia. So now the game is scheduled to be played tomorrow. And here's what they're going to do. They're going to pick up the game in the sixth inning with the score tied 2-2. This is nuts. As it is, most people have checked out of Major League Baseball and are paying no attention to the World Series. Nine million people? Watching Game 4, 9 million? I'm correct, sir. That was Game 3 on Saturday. 9 million people. That was it. But to make people wait hours and hours for the game to begin, only to start playing it in these dismal conditions, and then to keep playing in the dismal conditions so that Tampa Bay could tie the game up and then they could suspend the game so then it could be continued tonight or tomorrow or whenever. Outrageous. No wonder so many people are pissed off at baseball. No wonder so many people have checked out. No no wonder so many people aren't watching anymore. The Philadelphia Phillies should have won the World Series. I, by the way, I'm no fan of Philadelphia or the Philadelphia Phillies. Frankly, I was rooting for Tampa Bay just because they have the second lowest payroll in baseball. It is a great way of smacking up the Yankees and the Red Sox. I just love the idea that the Tampa Bay Rays would be the world champion. Thought it would be great. But i got to tell you something. This was one of the most outrageous things I have ever, ever seen. Do we have Steve Futterman on the line? How fantastic is that? CBS Radio Cub reporter Steve Futterman has been at the World Series in Philadelphia. Steve. Tom, Tom, they've uh, made me a correspondent now. I'm no longer a Cub reporter. Now, do they have to elevate you to correspondent? Do do, do the Cardinals get together? Do they send smoke out the chimney? How's that work? It was a three-day meeting at CBS, and then uh, finally the smoke came out on West 54th Street, 57th Street, and uh, yes, I was made a correspondent. There was also smoke that day on 54th Street, 53rd Street, and 52nd Street. I want you right, to right, know. Right, right, yeah. There's smoke every day on every street in New exactly. York to some degree, yes. So now here you are. You've always got the plum gig, and uh, uh, Steve Futterman of CBS Radio News is covering the World Series, and you out, you are still in Philadelphia. Still in Philadelphia, you know, I was... What a pleasure. Night. What a what a plum gig. Well, you know, I, I'm thinking of uh, what... W, didn't W.C. Fields say, all things considered, I'd rather be in Philadelphia, right? Uh, he was kidding. He oh, was, oh, I see. Yes. Well, it was a very interesting game last night. So, so what, what's your theory on this, Tom? I hear you have an interesting theory. I love theories, you know. Well, my theory is real simple. I mean, uh, under the rules of baseball, after four and a half innings, that was an official game. Right. And it should have been called at that point. And the Philadelphia Phillies should have been crowned the world champions and be done with it. If Bud Sealing, the commissioner of baseball, doesn't like the rules, then they should change the rules. But those are the rules. Instead, he allowed the game to sloppily continue into the sixth inning just long enough so Tampa Bay could tie it up and they could have a suspended game to drag this miserable World Series another day. Well, what a skeptical person you are, Tom. <laughs> I'm, I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked by, by your Yeah, that's not the Tom Likas I know. Oh, Bud. it certainly is. Now, no, now, Steve, it sure is. You better believe it. I'll bet, I'll, <laughs> now, if, if Bud Seeley had a press conference, I'm sure you were there. What was his explanation for this? His explanation was that, and, and to some degree, I agree with him. First of all, they really wanted to play the game if possible. They wanted it to take place 
last night and last night, and then if they had to, be on their way to Tampa Bay and just end it. They did not want rain to interfere with the game. So I, I do buy them on that account. They really tried to force this game to be played. It, it should have been stopped earlier. You're absolutely right. Uh, the game went on way too long, and it was pretty sloppy on the field. I don't necessarily agree with some of your other points, because apparently Sea league as baseball ball commissioner, does have a right to suspend a game rather than call the game at the end of a regulation or uh, when it becomes an official game because of rain. He does have that right. And apparently, from what we've been told by both sides now, this is Phillies and uh, uh, Rays officials, Selig indicated to them even before the game started that he would not uh, have a, a short rain shortened game. He does have the right to do it. He also has the right, if he wanted to, to do what you suggested, say that uh, the game's official after five and a half innings uh, or five innings, and uh, that would make the Phillies the uh, world champions. I just didn't like the way the game dragged on conveniently until in the mud Tampa Bay tied it up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't think anyone really liked that. The Philly fans here who have a big, you know, conspiratorial uh, uh, mind because of the fact that they've been in baseball since the 1880s and have won one world championship in 1980, they sometimes feel the world's against them. Uh, they are a bit concerned about that. On the talk shows today, lots of people complain, why did they wait? Why? Because that run, that second run by Tampa Bay, you could argue that that run was the result of just the sloppy conditions on the field. That would be a, a fair assessment. I'm not saying it's absolutely true, but you could make that argument, and I wouldn't argue with you. And the other thing that happens when you start playing this game is it starts giving advantages to, it could be one team or the other, uh, regarding pitching rotations. Uh, pitchers that were not scheduled to pitch will now be rested and ready to pitch maybe a second time when they wouldn't have been ready yet to pitch in the rotation? To some degree, that helps. I think the Phillies have a better bullpen. I mean, remember, we're expecting to start the game tomorrow, which will mean that we'll start at around 8.30 Eastern time, uh, 5.30 Pacific time after the Barack Obama half-hour ad on, on Fox and a couple other uh, stations. And uh, we'll start in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Phillies will have an extra at bat because uh, they will have not batted yet in the sixth. So they will come to bat, and uh, we may have one of the shortest uh, games ever. It's not going to seem like a real game. We could be done in an hour with uh, the entire game five, and then if the Phillies win, it's over. I'm coming back to L.A. If not, I have a very early morning flight to Tampa, Florida. So this could be uh, one of the few baseball games where the pre- and the post-game show are longer than the game itself. Yes, uh, unless it goes into extra innings, and, you know, we've seen that happen before. But uh, right now it's tied 2-2, Phillies and Tampa Bay. If the Phillies can uh, win this uh, two-and-a-half inning game, or it will be three-and-a-half inning game, they will be the world champions. And uh, I was sort of hoping my, my perverse mind last night was thinking that we would have this rain delay, and then suddenly the umpire would come onto the field and signal to the fans, that the game is over and the Phillies would then run onto the field and celebrate because it w wouldn't be like a last out to win the World Series. It would be a call by the umpire that the game is over to win the World Series. Well, that could also happen if there was a forfeit uh, for whatever reason. That Don't could happen. That could happen. It, it could, anything can happen, Tom. You're right. Uh, never say never. I'm, I'm really, I don't think the forfeit's likely, though. Well, I, I don't think it's likely it doesn't happen very often, but it could happen, and uh, then the World Series would be decided by that. Yeah, uh, I'm a Cub reporter, but I'm, I, I'm going to take a chance, even though I'm a Cub reporter, that there will not be a forfeit of, of, uh, of Game uh, 5. Okay. Just a guess. All right. Very well. We'll, we'll see how that turns out. So uh, uh, how anticlimactic would this be if the Phillies finally win after waiting days to finish this game? It is going to be funny. I mean, they're going to be excited, obviously. that It'll be a big thrill for them. But uh, obviously, when you have the, you know, the pent-up excitement or non-excitement, depending on your view of baseball, of uh, three hours, three and a half hours, or even four hours, sometimes these World Series games go on a bit too long. Uh, when you have that, you know, the, the, it, it's sort of like a beginning, a middle, and the end. Well, tomorrow we're going to have sort of the end of the middle and the end, and it's just not going to have the, the buildup that you expect from a, from a baseball game. But if the Phillies win, obviously they're going to be very excited. If the Rays win, they'll have the series back in Florida. They'll be excited. So there'll be some excitement at the end. I just don't know who's going to be the team excited. Is it raining now in Philadelphia? 
right now. And it's sort of funny. It's been raining throughout the day. It is, it's cold, and it's going to be very cold tomorrow in the high 30s. It's very cold right now, but it has stopped raining. It was supposed to rain throughout the night. Uh, Major League Baseball earlier today said we're not going to take a chance. We're going to halt tonight's game and play it tomorrow. As it turns out right now, uh, I mean, weather conditions could change, but at this very moment as we're talking, it's, it's a very nice uh, evening here. Cold, but uh, no rain, so they could have played tonight. Unbelievable. And Tampa Bay playing in a dome stadium, I, I imagine the commissioner would also have had the power to move uh, Game 5 uh, uh, to Tampa and then put Game 6 or 7 back in Philadelphia. Couldn't he have done yep. that? That is my understanding. He has this uh, this umbrella power called for the good of the game, which gives him a great deal of power. You may remember Bowie Kuhn used that years ago to stop uh, when Charlie Finley, if you remember Charlie Finley, who used to own the Oakland A's, was trying to sell all his players. He stopped uh, the, the, the wholesale sale for the good of the game. So the commissioner has this umbrella uh, uh, power that can be challenged, but he can at least begin to try to enforce it uh, under his powers for the good of the game. Because honestly, for the good of the game, what good will it be if nobody's watching Game 5 of the World Series? Well, I think the Obama ad's going to have a good lead-in. I think that may be good for Major League Baseball. <laughs> but you can watch it on, I think, three, at least three of the four networks. Yeah, I think was uh, ABC's not carrying it, but CBS, NBC, Fox, and I think MSNBC may be having it. So yeah, it's going to be on a bunch of networks tomorrow. Depends which one you're watching. Yeah, I understand. Uh, by, by the way, a final word of advice to you, Steve. Uh, being yep. in Philly, have you have you had some cheese steak? Yeah, I've had them before, Tom. Uh, you know, they have what Gino, Gino's, and Pat's right across yeah. the street from each other. Yes. Had them both. Uh, which what, what's your preference, Gino well, or Pat? Well, I'm a Gino's man, but but here's the thing: do not fall for ordering the cheese steak from room service. Really? That's the that's the lazy radio personality way of sitting in there, and you look in the menu. Because it's raining and it's cold out there and you're in Philadelphia. And so you go, oh, look at this. They got cheesesteak right here at the hotel. Don't do that. Don't do not do that. I won't. I won't. Okay, good. I'm so glad you called me to tell me that. I, you know what? I'll bet I caught you in time. I hope I caught you before dinner. You did. You did. You did. And I'm going to reanalyze what I was going to do. I'm going to think it over. I'm going to sit down with myself and decide what will I do tonight for dinner. Not to mention the, time, the fact that the cheesesteak will cost six times as much at the hotel. Right. That's yeah, true, too. Yes. All right, uh, Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Anytime, Tom. Always great to be with you. All right, there he goes. It's correspondent Steve Futterman from CBS Radio News. Uh, he's reporting for the World Series in Philadelphia. Your telephone calls are coming up. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Likas Show. It's Tom Micah's show, 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Tom. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, I just wanted to call and let you know I'm a uh, longtime Philadelphia Phillies fan. I just moved from Philadelphia to Redondo Beach in February, and I'm just calling to say that, you know, how I agree with you completely on how Bud Selig uh, kind of changed the rules on us there, but... For me, being a Philadelphia Phillies fan, I wouldn't want to win the World Series in a, a short and suspended game because of rain. I just didn't think, you know, it would be right for us to win the World Series like that. I'd really like to win it outright in a, in a full-length series. No, but the problem is that those are the rules of baseball. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. I just, I just feel that, you know, waiting since 1980, you know, we lost the World Series in 93. I wouldn't want to win it that way and have that kind of black mark in the record book saying that we won the World Series without completing a full game. I'd be more concerned about a forfeit or about uh, somebody using a cork bat, but this is part of the rules of baseball. I mean, you played 162 games, and a number of games in Philadelphia were uh, called on account of rain during the season. Yeah, but then you got yeah you got a chance to make them up if you can. So, you know, I just, I just to me, I just didn't want to... Wait no, but long. actually, that's not true. If if the Philadelphia Phillies during the regular season were leading two to nothing in a ball game or two to one, uh, and it rained after that, uh, it just kept raining. Uh, that game, they would not make that game up. That game would be an official game, and it would count. 
Good, yeah, good point, but those games don't go into a record book like a World Series championship would with a black mark saying that you want it, but you want it in five and a half innings or six innings or whatever it may be. How do you feel about the fact that they started the game in the first place? Um, you know what? You're right. They should have looked at the weather report and, and known that the upper radar would show that it wasn't going to stop raining. They shouldn't have played the game in the first place. You're right about that. And then they wouldn't have been able to play it tonight because of the snow. Um, but uh, and right. and it, if know. he was going to suspend the game, he should have suspended it earlier. Yeah, because B.J. Upton coming around uh, third base. I know this is not your concern as a Philly fan. The guy could have hurt himself. I mean, he had to take that big wide turn around third because third base the third baseline was underwater. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And I and I think well, you know, I think Pat Burrell should have had a stronger arm to throw home, and I think he should have been out, but. You know, that's my, my case against Pat Burrell. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. <laughs> hey, Tom, thank, thank you very much for listening to me and uh, take me out since the Lakers are opening up tonight, Kobe Bryant style. Here you go, Don. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Okay, you know I I just uh, was telling your screener that I've, I've been to the point where I I was a, a baseball fan from way back. I played the game, I umpired the game, and uh, I, I used to be to the point where I couldn't wait for the World Series every year. You know, it was my Halloween, it was my Christmas, and you know it's kind of the point where I I don't care who gives a rat's ass. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, I, I got to tell you honestly, uh, there was a time when not only did I stay home to watch the World Series, but when they played games during the day, that my day stopped at work, at school, wherever I was, my day stopped to watch the World Series or sneak a glimpse of it. It was such a big deal. I'd stay home from school. I mean, last night I was at a hockey game. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, when, after the strike ended the uh, the World Series, and then they had the... Uh the talks that were supposed to save the World Series, and then with the wild card, with the the fiasco of last year's World Series, and then that all-star game where nobody knew how to throw a baseball to finish the game and it ends in a tie. I mean, baseball, and, and my personal opinion, I think Seelig's the biggest idiot to be in charge of anything. He's right up there with Palin, my God. Yeah, but uh, the uh, the other the ironic thing, though, is as dopey as he seems, baseball does generate more revenue than ever. That's exactly right. Has higher think. attendance than ever. It astounds me. <laughs> but interleague baseball is great when the New York Yankees are playing the New York Mets. But exactly. when the Pittsburgh Pirates are playing the Kansas City Royals, ho no, freaking oh. hum. Well, the, all the networks hold their breath because they're afraid no one's going to watch. Oh, my, oh my God. God. This, uh, this last night should never have taken place. The, the, the weather was horrible. Uh, if they... You, the World Series used to be played at the beginning of October, not in uh, Thanksgiving, you know? That's pretty much getting there now. Come on, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We're talking about some of the things that have happened in the World Series. Have you been paying attention to this? Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Ron? What's up, Tom? It was obviously staged. You think it was staged? Who wants to watch the Philadelphia Phillies in the Tampa Bay Rays? Well, clearly nobody because the ratings have been horrible even on good nights. Clearly. I want to watch some powerhouses slug it out, not these two teams. Hey, can you take me out with the Thank You Jesus on Bong Hit? Why, yes, I can. Thank you, Jesus! We're burning through these calls at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Richard on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Hey, listen, I, I totally agree with you on your on your point about the game should have been called. Number, I, I figured there were three mistakes that were made. Number one, the game shouldn't have been played because it was so uh, sloggy in the you know it was a mud bath, and the guy rounding third could have get it, got injured. Number two, the game should have been suspended before four and a half innings if that was going to happen. And since that those two things happened, we number three is. Um, 
since they let it beyond, go beyond an official game to what was the six innings, it should have been the Phillies won and the deal. Everybody goes home. Phillies are the winners. That's what I think. I mean, those are the, those are the rules we have in baseball all year long. The, we, the rules, the rules just don't change because one team's up or one team's down, or they want to get another, you know, fifty thousand people in the in the stadium or whatever powers are going on behind the scenes. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, I went out. My my boy was a, a you know going to the little league and stuff younger years ago. You know, the rules were the rules, and that was a you know sometimes he would win, sometimes he would lose, and that was a, the way the game was played. You don't start changing the rules midstream and say, well, for the good of the game or blah blah blah. Yeah, if you really want to do something for the good of the game, they should have called the game off before it started, knowing what the weather was going to be. That was all, that was all on the radar. It was all forecast. Yeah, I know. I totally agree with you, and I totally back you up, and a couple of your callers, no offense to them or nothing, but, you know, what, what could possibly happen now, like there's a change in the pitch rotation, one team gains momentum, one team uh, gets more rest or whatever, they they, um, they can go back to, to Florida, the Rays can win too, and then the, the Phillies will be whining uh, to Bud Seeley's door all day long and complaining why uh, why they did this. Absolutely right, Richard. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jim on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. Hey, uh, got a little different perspective, maybe. I think that uh, nobody's talking about the players themselves, and uh, I, I think that it's probably, they, they probably shouldn't have started the game, but it's the best outcome that could have probably happened is it ended up high score and they can go back and try to finish the game on a decent field. And actually play the game. I mean, I've been playing competitive baseball and softball all my life. And the last thing I want to do is have the game end on a technicality or you're up by one run after four innings or whatever the, whatever it is. You want to play the game. And sometimes people on the field try to pull that stuff like, oh, you know, we're up by one. The game's time's up, you know, and, and, and they just, they just kind of laugh at them. Yeah, but it's not people playing a game. The fact is uh, that it was raining like there was no tomorrow. Oh, that absolutely. field was that field was tragic. Yeah, they shouldn't have started the game. I I agree with that. But I think that once they did start the game, and uh, it ended up tie score, and they can go try to finish the game on a decent field and and, and kind of have it be a more. But perfect. it wouldn't have been a tie score had they called the game when they should have. Well, <laughs> have you ever played sports? I, I don't know. It's... Yes, I have. But this we're not talking about kids trying to trying to gain an advantage by uh, taking advantage of somebody else. Uh, we're talking about the, the rules of the game at uh, the whole 162 game season. Uh, if it's raining and one team is winning after four and a half or five innings, that game's over and it goes into the books and that's it. There's no suspended games. I'm talking about an athlete's mentality, man. I don't know if you... I don't really uh, care what the athlete's mentality is. I'm more concerned about the fans. The fans who buy the tickets, the fans who buy the products that are advertised, the fans who sit in front of that TV. They're the real right. lifeblood of baseball. Well, that's a perspective I don't quite... I don't quite get that one as well as the other one. But, you know, that's a perspective I was trying to add. is from the athlete's perspective. I that's understand the athlete's perspective, but the athlete, guess what? Everything's from the athlete's perspective. The athletes are, are, are paid tens of millions of dollars to play this game. Uh, and, and the athletes uh, pretty much, uh, what they say goes. You know, once in a while, maybe they should do something for the fans. And as far as I'm concerned... I'm a baseball fan, and I've checked out. I don't really care how Game 5 ends. The Phillies are up 3-1. They're going to win the World Series. You know, who knows how long it's going to take to finish Game 5. I, I have checked out. I don't care anymore. Hey, I, hear, I hear you, Tom. I, don't, I can't stand to watch baseball either. <laughs> I love the play, but I can't stand to watch it. All right, Jim. Thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, uh, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is Tom also, and I was just listening to your program driving on the way home, and uh, I I read something on the internet today where the rules were changed in 2007 specifically to cover postseason games. So I don't believe Bud Selig did anything out of the ordinary. He didn't he didn't trump any existing rules at all. But uh, and I, I, I well, if it's for the good of baseball, I don't think what he did is going to do baseball any good. Oh, uh, again, he was going by the rules. No. MLB Major League Baseball Rules Committee. Changed
changed the rules last year, okay? Now, what I read in the paper today was not that they changed the rules. What I read in the paper today is that Bud Seeley was claiming some kind of executive privilege uh, to do what's in the best interest of baseball. Making an executive privilege here, he was going by what the current rules of the game are, which were changed at the end. At the end I'm of the gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look that up. But I, 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 you know, again, I think. And by the way, the rule is stupid. If that's the rule, it's stupid, no doubt about it. All right, coming up, we're gonna do uh, the remainder of the hour. Uh, something we do every once in a while. We're going to take unscreened phone calls for the remainder of the hour. Anything can happen. Anything goes. Uh, so start dialing because who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in the next 20 minutes? Tom Likis. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likis. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likis Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. And now we are ready to rock. We're going to do a bout of unscreened calls here where anything can happen. Anything. And it can happen at any time. I just called it right now. I'm like the commissioner of baseball. I just called it right now. That's it. Unscreened calls. 1-800-5800-TOM. There's no screener. And that means uh, when you get on the air, you know the deal. Turn the radio off, which you won't. Uh, be prepared because you're not going to talk to Dean. You're going to talk to me. No one will be prepared for that. And that's what makes it so much fun. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, wish you uh, were having a uh, you know a remote broadcast, but I understand the economy is not the way it is. That's, that's exactly right. It's the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Yes. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you doing? Great. Is this Tom? No, this is not Tom. All right, fine. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Going great. Hey, you know, I've listened to your show for quite a while now, and maybe I've just missed it, but uh, I've never really heard your opinion on what uh, uh, what your opinion is on uh, drugs. On, on what about drugs? Uh, I mean, do you, are you in favor of, of uh, keeping illicit drugs illegal? No. No? Well, I mean, as far as, like, heroin and crystal meth and cocaine? Uh, drugs should be completely legal. I'm a libertarian. Great. I, I agree with you 100%. Thank you. Thank you. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, this is Michael. Um, I've actually called you a few times, and the uh, reason I'm calling right now is... Uh, the last time I spoke to you, I was in the military, and uh, leaving my wife, it was kind of like a success story. Right. And what happened? But the uh, reason I'm calling now is, since I've been separated, um, my wife has used my name and my social security number to purchase um, big-ticket items. Well, that's now, fraud, and you need an attorney. Well, I know I do, and um, the steps I'm taking is... Uh, just today, I've been trying to go over to the police station to uh, file a report. Right. What's the problem? Why can't you get in? They will not take the report. All right. They, that's, they, they then said, that's why you need an attorney. Well, um... Get an attorney. The Tom Likas Show. Hello? Tom. Yes. Hey, hey, how come you don't ask, uh, ask us if we care anymore when someone says, how are you? Because I don't care. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing Okay. Hey, check this out. Um, Thanksgiving's coming up, baby. That's and, you know, right. we we'll all have to give thanks. But listen, Tom, shouldn't they have gave, those Indians should have gave those pilgrims a donkey? That way at least we could have a piece of ass during Turkey Day. There we go. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes. How are you, Tom? Great. Good. Hey, Tom, I just wanted to ask you, man, could you quit talking over people? No. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. Sunscreen calls on the Tom Likas show. Can't you tell? Hello. Hey, what up, Tom? Not much. Hey, man. I'm not to bring up the Prop 8 thing, but um, I was low on Prop 8, but I had a question that one of my friends was arguing with me about. What is that? Um, well, basically, they brought up that um, if we do legalize or give them their rights, yes or, or no on Prop 
Wait a minute. Gays and lesbians already have the right to get married in California. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, You're not I'm, giving I'm them those rights. They have those rights. Okay, but my question is, if there, if that is a official and churches disagree to marry them under God in their church, are they liable to be uh, sued because of um, discrimination? No, uh, uh, churches are able to uh, believe uh, in anything they like, including to be racist, including uh, that they only want white people uh, or black people, or they, they're allowed to do that. All right, awesome. That's all I was wondering, Tom. Blow me up, man. Oh, there you go. The Tom Like is show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Hey, this is Reggie Conn from Rialto. Hey, I just wanted to speak uh all these Republicans, uh, picking out every little thing. It's, it's just a, a classic case of being a hypocrite because when people are yelling, uh, kill Barack, no one called the police, you know. When when they get the bail out, no one says nothing. You know what I mean? Uh, they chose who the, all the money from the bail out went. But all you hear Republicans talk about is Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. What about everybody else? Well, yep, that'll remain a rhetorical question. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom Likas, how you doing? Great. Listen to you. I'm listening to you live uh, on the Internet in Seattle. Great. I was, I was, I'm a long time fan. I think I was there when you went, went to the cloud room. It's a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, I've been loving you ever since. Okay, I got a question for you. Yeah. What's the best South American country that I can go to to see as much poon as I can see? Ha! <laughs> Brazil, from what I hear. Brazil, have you been, because I, I know you were talking about, uh, uh, didn't you go to um, Argentina? I went to Argentina, but uh, I hear Brazil is wilder in that respect. And have you heard anything about Uruguay? Yes, and in fact, uh, I was there. Really? I was there on New Year's Eve, and on New Year's Eve, the clubs opened at 1 a.m. Oh, opened at 1. Opened at 1. All right, all right. Well, hey, keep up the good work, Tom, and you're still number one in Seattle. Love that. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I, uh, I'm i calling because I want to suggest a new way for you to bring people out of phone calls. All right. Lesbo, lesbo orgy style. Just get a <laughs> bunch of female panting and moaning. That'd be awesome. Oh, okay. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. <laughs> Let's try this one on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, you're all wrong with your baseball uh, opinion. How so? Well, you said it's uh, not up to the fans. It's absolutely up to the players, actually. The players, no doubt, do not want to win a World Series by having the game called. I um, really don't care what the players want. You know, in hockey, the players don't want the shootout. They don't like it. They don't like games being decided by a shootout. But you know what? Uh, the players don't pay $150 a ticket to come watch the game. I really don't care what the players want. Well, no, the the, the fans, though, they don't want to see a, a World Series won that way either, guaranteed. Oh, God, you say guaranteed, but how many people have tuned out on this World Series already? Well, yeah, maybe some have, but I guarantee them. The, the, the Saturday, the night was the low, Saturday night was one of the lowest rated World Series games in the history of the World Series. Well, no, no, number one, this is going down in history as one of the longest World Series in, in number of days. But I'm telling you, the players do not number want to win Number of games? What do you mean one of the longest? It's, the longest you can go is seven games. No, I'm saying number of days, Tom, number of days. Oh, number of days. Yeah. I, t I used to work for the Los Angeles Dodgers in the clubhouse, so I, I, I have a real strong perspective of what the players want. But, nobody, but the point is, that this is not a game for the players, it's a game for the fans. The players are the hired hands, they're the employees. Uh, the, the paying customers should decide. The Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hey, Tom, uh, how many acres do you have out there at your ranch? Twenty. Twenty acres, do you ever ride quads or dirt bikes out there? Uh, not yet. Do you do that? I have done it uh, out at Pismo Beach. So you have ridden quads out of Pismo Beach? I have ridden a dirt bike at Pismo Beach, and I have ridden, AT ridden an ATV as well. Excellent. What else do you do in sports? Uh, I'm a tennis guy myself. No way. Yeah, I play tennis. But I'm impressed that you do the motocross thing. I, I see you're shocked. I know. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it hanging? Hanging right, as always. All right. Hey, hey Tom. You know these... Phillies won. According to Vegas bookies, the Phillies won, and they paid out. 
And they, well, I do know they released a box score during the game with Bud Selig saying the game was official. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I have a question. Um, all right. So you were explaining before about how you made more money under Clinton's uh, time, even with higher taxes, and you were talking about Yes, how... bottom line at the end of the year, yes. How, how does that work, though? How does how is it, how is uh, McCain ending up? Costing us more, though. Like, I mean, I just oh, because the stock anything. market did better when we had higher taxes than it's doing now with lower taxes. And so you, I remember you said something about like if the dollar's worth less, it's actually a hidden tax or something like that. That is, is that correct. Yes. Really, man, that's crazy. That's what it is. Something else. Um, I was listening to your shows on Sunday, the ones where you do the tasting of like the wine and stuff like right. that. Right. What was the name of the honey that you had with the Canadian ice wine? I can't remember. I, I, I don't remember myself. The Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, 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 Hello? Yes. Yeah. I just got to say a statement to Tom, baby. I've been calling for... All right. I'll, I'll tell time. you what. I'll let him know you called. The Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what do you think about GM asking for $10 billion in order to help them buy Chrysler, which would promote less competition? I don't, well, first of all, I don't think we should be bailing out uh, anybody. Not banks, not auto companies, not anybody. You know, uh, anybody, I, made, anybody made bad business decisions, business has inherent risks. And it, if you take the risks, then you should uh, live with the consequences. The Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Love hey. your show. Thank Think you. are awesome. Thank you. Quick, bitch. Um, how do you get rid of an irritating, coked-out roommate that refuses to pay bills or do anything? Is there a legal way that I could just evict him real quick? You mean it's a, it's a roommate whose name was on a lease? Yeah, rental agreement, no lease. Well, you, well, there's, well, I mean, there's always the police. If you know they have drugs, you could solve that problem pretty easily. Oh, okay. I didn't think to go down that road. Well, if you don't like the person, uh, you know what? Cocaine's illegal. Call the police. Very true. Pleasure speaking with you. I I'm sure. The Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? Doing okay. I'm calling in. I just want to talk about food real quick. All right. Have you been to Cold Springs Tavern over by your ranch? You know, I know exactly where it is, but I haven't been there yet, and I, I was just talking about that the other night with somebody. Oh, you got to go. It'll become one of your... You, you'll be going there probably every time you go to your ranch. Really? Sounds good to me. All right. Uh, of course, our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Unscreen calls can happen at any time. So you got to listen every day, every hour, as often as you can. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.